Hey everybody, it's Susan with Susan Monroe Art, and today I'm doing a new video about how to apply masking fluid, specifically using the ruling pen, which is this thing right here. I didn't know about these for a long time, and once I had explained to me how I can use a ruling pen to apply masking fluid, I think it really approved my art and my ability to use masking fluid to make thin lines and with a lot of control. And I'm just gonna show you an example of something that I used my ruling pen on to do uh, masking fluid. And it's this painting right here. If you can see all these little bubbles in this area, it gives you an idea of the control I had for applying my masking fluid and also how thin I could make the lines. You can also adjust the lines and make them thicker. It's really just a great tool. So we will talk about how to use that today. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and that you'll click the subscribe button down in the bottom corner or even click the bell icon and that way you'll know when I upload more um, watercolor tutorials and videos. So thanks for watching and let's get going learning about the ruling pen. The ruling pens are available today on Amazon and all sorts of places. They would just come like this, a one, one ruling pen. Um, the ends can be varying sizes. I happen to have a full ruling pen set that a friend of mine sold to me. Uh, she bought it on eBay and it's the full set that a draftsman would have used uh, probably in an architect's office. Draftsmen used to use ruling pens to draw all their lines for um, plans for blueprints. They are also used a lot by graphic artists. This set is obviously very old and it has all those pieces. I don't use all of this stuff, but it has a large drafting pen and a small one. If you're interested in getting something like this, I'm sure you can find them on eBay. I'm not sure how expensive they are. I'm sure you can find them for a variety of prices. So in this set, I have a large one, a small one. I have a spare head for one, and then I have one that works like a compass. And I'm gonna show you how all of these work. As I said though, you can still buy one on Amazon or um, just Google it, you'll find them ruling pens. This is the masking fluid I'm currently using. It's PBO drawing gum. Um, you can see it's a blue color. There are all sorts of masking fluids. They come in different containers, different applicators. Some are yellow, some are white. Um, occasionally, if you have a colored one, you'll find the color has uh, just sort of drifted down to the bottom. If you wanna stir that up, I used to shake it up, don't do that. You can gently swirl it around or you could use the end of your paintbrush and stir it up if you want to mix the color into the rest of the, the masking fluid. It, most of them have a little bit of color just so you can see where they've been applied. If it's white and you're putting it on the white paper, it can be difficult to find. It can be difficult to know where you've put it. You can just tell sort of by the sheen of it on the paper where it is. So I like mine to have a little bit of color. And right now I like the blue. So masking fluid is used to reserve the white of the paper. In watercolors, we don't use white paints. We use the white of the paper to be the white of the painting. And that's why it's important to keep those areas that you want white from getting paint on them. And that's where your masking fluid comes in, masking off those white areas so they can stay nice and clean while you work on the rest of your painting. Here are the three masking pens I use from my set. I have, of course, a large one, a small one, and one I can use to make circles. The masking pen portion of each of them works the exact same way. You have a sharp tip here, like your pen nib. Then this is the reservoir that's gonna hold your masking fluid, or it would have held your ink if you were a draftsman. And then there's a cog, a screw right here that you can use to make this tip narrower or wider depending on the width of line you want. If you make it really wide like this, that does not work well for masking fluid because the masking fluid is just a little too thick to smoothly run out of that wide of a space. I'll make it a little bit narrower to show you. So, so I've made it pretty narrow. I don't wanna make it so narrow that you can't see it from the camera. But now I'm gonna dip this into my masking fluid. 
be careful you don't dip it so far in that you get the cog. I've done that. All right, now I'm gonna wipe off top and bottom pretty well. I sometimes even just take my finger and dab it. Okay, just to make sure I'm not gonna have any drops running down. You probably want to start your first stroke after each time you dip it in the masking fluid on a scrap piece of paper, just to make sure it's running out well. Sometimes it takes a second, you might have to tap it just a bit to get the masking fluid down so it's working. So it's best to make your first stroke on a scrap piece of paper and then move to your main piece of artwork. And you can see the lines I'm making here, how beautifully they come out with the ruling pen. And you wanna make sure you don't bear down really hard with it because you'll score your paper, you'll end up with grooves in the paper that you can see once you start painting. So you just wanna very lightly put it on the surface and then draw it across. Okay. Yeah, some lovely lines. So if I really want to get precise and make a super straight line, I would use a ruler that has a foam or a cork backing that lifts the ruler off the surface of the paper just a little bit, and that keeps the masking fluid from being drawn under the edge of the ruler while you're writing. If this edge was flush to the paper, it just has some sort of little vacuum, vacuum effect that would draw the ink or the masking fluid underneath and make it not a straight line. So let me show you how this works then. So I wanna make a line. And I can make a beautiful long straight line of masking fluid that way. When I'm done using it and I want to clean it, I would open it up pretty much as wide as it will go. You can even totally unscrew this screw if you need to when you clean it. And I'm just going to take a paper towel and wipe it off. Masking fluid is a latex, sort of like a uh, rubber cement, and it's just going to rub off like rubber cement would do. And I take my paper towel and wipe down the inside edges to make sure I get all the masking fluid out of there. Okay. There, good as new. So if I wanted to make a very precise circle, as I said, I could use this one. Let's make this a little, change the circumference of my circle with this screw right here to make it wider or narrower. I'm gonna dip this end into my masking fluid. Wipe off the excess. Let me make sure it's coming out the way I want it to. Yes. I'm gonna put it down. And make It's really great. A great thing about rolling pens is that you can also use them with your watercolor. You don't have to just use them for masking fluid. Say I need a nice straight line of watercolor. All I need to do is mix up a little puddle of paint here. Okay, fill my brush. And then I'm going to gently wipe this across the edge of my ruling pen. You can see the reservoir fills up. Again, you wanna to go to your piece of scrap paper and make sure everything is flowing the way you want it to. There we go, that took just a sec to get going. Look, there's a little piece of masking fluid just blocking that a teeny bit. Let me see if I can get that off. There we go. There. And you can have a very nice straight watercolor line. That's better. Pretty cool, huh? Now I'm going to paint over all of our masking fluid and really quickly show you how to remove the masking fluid once it's dried. As I said, it's gonna be protecting the light of the paper. You're gonna wait until the masking fluid fully dries before you paint on top of it. It will change color slightly become more gummy looking. Um, and let me just make something pretty here.
and my paint is dry. And before I remove the masking fluid, though, I wanted to show you some areas on here very lightly. You can see places where I pressed really hard and scored the surface of, paper, of the paper with my ruling pen. And so that's what you want to avoid doing. All right, so the way I remove the masking fluid is with a rubber pickup. They might be called rubber cement pickup. This one is really old. When they come, they're much better looking, just sort of a block of, of rubber. Um, I use these. You can also just remove it with your fingertip sometimes. Okay, but I think this is a little cleaner. I've occasionally had a little something on my fingertip and rubbed it into my painting. That's no fun. So simply gently press and all your masking fluid will stick to your, your pickup. There you go. You can see what beautiful lines this ruling pen made. There you go. All right, so um, if you have any more questions about how to use the ruling pen or you want to see other ways of applying masking fluid in more detail, please get in touch. I also have one general video about four ways to apply masking fluid. The ruling pen is included in that, but this one is just a little more in depth. This video tells you a little more about the, the ruling pen and how to use it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you will like and subscribe my channel. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.